Hello audience. Now first of all, thank you very much for the massive amount of enthusiastic comments in the last video. This project has gotten quite a bigger following than I expected, so I hope I don't disappoint you. In this video I'm going to reconstruct the top frame. It's probably what I least want to do on this thing, so may as well get it done now and get it over with. And here's the back of the top frame. Now, the front and rear bows were just not even there anymore. The middle one is still here and in good shape, except it's warped really bad. So since the other two have to be replaced, I'm going to replace that one too. And here's the new ones, which I just made myself. They're pretty simple. They're just inch and a half by three quarter inch. They're held onto the irons with two rivets. I've already removed the center one, and now we'll remove what's left of the rear ones. The front top irons, or for the header, they have some noticeable problems. This one is cracked a little here and has some rust damage, but that's not too bad. This one, the end of it is completely broken off, and the remaining part is rusted really bad. Now this is all reusable. This, I don't know if it's damaged beyond repair, or if I can reuse it. I'll just have to try and clean it up and see what we got. I'm using a wire brush and heat to remove the rust. Not the most efficient way to do it, but it does work. And now that I've cleaned everything off, we can take a better look at it. Now this part, from this bolt hole over here, is still pretty nice. It's rusted out really bad at the end though. Now after a lot of thinking, I've decided I'm just going to weld this piece back on and leave it. Because it would be really difficult to make one of these and have it come out right, especially with all the holes and everything. And like I said, from here back, it's fine. So, structurally it'll hold. I did consider just trimming the bad parts out of this and welding patches in it. The problem with that is I won't be able to dress off the weld from the inside. So I'd have to notch out the bow to clear it. And I don't want to do that. As you can see, the bolt that goes through here is going to hold it pretty good. 
but what I think I'm going to do is either make a new bow or extend the ends of it so it goes all the way out and reaches the other bolt. I'll do the same thing for the other side and that'll make it more than strong enough. And if you're wondering why am I going through all this effort to save this and not replace it, it's because if you look at it from here back, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just a little surface rust. It's very rare you see originals in this condition. They're usually bent up or cracked and have a lot of welds in them or extra holes. The casting of the ends usually rusted out or welded back on or cracked or something like that. This is really nice. And the rest of them in this set are exactly the same way. So, you probably wouldn't find a better set of 23 to 25 runabout top irons. And even if you did, these are too nice to throw away. I'd fix them and use them anyway, so may as well use them on this car. And now it's ready to weld together. Now, in addition to welding it, I also made a patch panel to go inside of it. Just a piece of 20 gauge. I'm going to weld this inside too, so this part will be double walled. I wanted to add some reinforcement here because there's a lot of stress on this section because this part is what holds it to the windshield, hence why it probably broke there in the first place. And that's finished. Doesn't look very pretty, but it will work. And I welded it inside as well. So, it's never going to fail here again, anyway. The other side, I kind of did the same thing. Made a patch panel for the inside and welded it on both sides. Again, that'll hold. And we hit a new problem. Now the header bow I made, I just assumed it was the same width as the others, and it is not. It is actually supposed to be an inch wider, about. And the reason for that is because this curve on the irons is sharper on the front, probably to clear the windshield. So I ended up making a brand new header bow. The good news is, I was able to make it go further in here, like I wanted to. Now, what I was going to mention before that problem, and actually that problem proved my point, is when you're reconstructing the top frame on this, it is worth the effort to get the width of the header and the location of the clamps just right so that it just drops onto the windshield. It is also important when you're setting this up to use the windshield frames and the stanchions that you plan on using on the car permanently, not a temporary set. And I've learned that the hard way because the overall width of these can vary from one to another, especially if you're going from original parts to reproduction. And the overall width doesn't really make any difference as long as the header and the clamps are set up to match it. If you set it up to fit one windshield frame assembly and then put it on another one, you may end up with a not very pleasant surprise. 
Now this one, we've got it set up pretty good. It pretty much just drops right on. Now the holes that hold the clamps on are elongated for fine tuning, which we may need because when we start stretching the top material on this, it may dimensionally change a little bit. So we can adjust these to compensate if we need. And now I have the assembly together to mock it up to see if it fits the car decently and if it matches from one side to the other. And it looks pretty good, actually. It sits pretty straight and level, so nothing appears to be bent or twisted out of shape, which is really good. So no further work needs to be done on the irons, it looks like. Now the next thing to take care of is the wood that goes around the sides. As you can see on the rear, it's still here, but it's damaged pretty bad. That's going to have to be replaced. The center, it's still pretty nice and doesn't really do anything, so we're going to leave that. And the front was pretty much completely missing when I got it. Now what I did with this one is I took some scrap wood, glued it all together, and made a piece that fits in there. Fits pretty decently. And when it's time for final assembly, I'll bend these tabs down, and it'll work just fine. So now I gotta take the back of it apart and make some replacements for this. Now at this point I'd like to point out a production difference that has led to some confusion over the years. Now this over here is an example of the top sockets or top irons that were used from the beginning of production through 1917. And it's pretty much the design other car companies used well into the 20s. First of all it's oval shaped. The seam is on the inside. It's got some kind of elaborate joining technique, I'm not sure what. And if you look really closely, it's two really thin pieces of sheet metal that are double walled. And it stops right about at the edge of the top material. Now this uses a one-piece steam bent top bow that goes from one side to the other. This construction design, which was phased in during 1917, the most obvious difference is it's a rectangle shape instead of an oval. The seam is on the outside. 
it's single walled with a much thicker gauge of sheet metal. The biggest difference is it continues all the way to here and it's enclosed here and the bow rivets to it. Now just about everywhere I've read they say that these still used a steam bent one piece bow and this was formed around it during construction. Now some of them may have been done that way originally but this one wasn't. This is what's left of the top bow that came out of it and I assume this is original because it was still riveted together but it only goes to here. It had a tack strip across here instead of the bow. Now I don't know if all of them were done this way but I guess some of them were. So if you're restoring a set of these and you're not using a one-piece bow don't feel bad about it because Ford did the same thing too. Well, that's it for now. Now it's just sitting together, it still needs a lot done to it, but I wanted to get it to the point where all the rough work was done and establish that this was the right assembly for this car and it doesn't need to be redimensioned in any way. Which I didn't expect that, but it's ridiculous how often that is the case with Model T's. Anyway, thank you very much everyone for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video.